Whiplash is a 2003 platformer video game for the PlayStation 2 and original Xbox. A weasel named Spanked and a rabbit named Redmond find themselves chained to one another as the pair begin a daring escape from the HQ of a product testing corporation known as Genron. Think any evil megacorp like Amazon, Pentec, etc. The game's a 3D platformer with Spanks being controlled by the player and Redmond used more in combat or as a means of traversing the world. Literally, the weasel uses the rabbit as a flail. There was some funny controversy with the game being officially endorsed by PETA for its primary theme. However, if you play the game for even a short time or just look at the cover, uh, it reveals that animal abuse is not only the theme but also the point of the game, with the player-controlled weasel subjecting the rabbit to intense pain in order to himself escape. It kind of devalued the whole idea PETA was going for. <laughs> Uh, to preface, I had this game as a kid but never finished it back when I was probably like seven or eight. I probably got about a quarter of the way through it. It's always been my white whale to get it done with and so this video was meant to be me making my inner child happy. Also I thought it'd be uh, but we can get into that later on once I start shitting on the game in the review. Just to address that I'm using an emulator, after we lost all the PS2s to the frontline assaults during the console wars, I had to play this game on an emulator. Uh, I'm using PCSX2 with the disc I already own. Uh, I've bumped up the resolution and that's about all the jiggery pokery I've done to get the game presentable. It was pretty playable out of the box. Speaking of the game, the game plays much like any other platform of the time. Uh, the player controls the weasel, with the rabbit being used more as a war mace or a thing to jam between cogs and advance through stages. Spanx has the most standard platforming abilities, your single jump, your double jump, being able to run about, uh, etc. Though Spanx and Redmond could both traverse railings and zip lines using animal co-op, so Spanx will scurry on them, or when it comes to zip lines you could just jam the rabbit in there. Redmond's completely indestructible as a result of cosmetics testing conducted upon him by Gemron. Uh, a lifestyle choice that would be shamelessly copied by Madonna in the 2020s. Redmond could be held into security guards, jammed into machinery, and used as a grappling hook, among other uses. He could also be inserted into special outlets to be set on fire, frozen, electrified, inflated with helium, or even drenched in radioactive waste, each of these having an effect on the gameplay. There's also a levelling system. Uh, defeating human enemies found in the levels allows hyper snacks to be looted, which increase Spanx's health or Redmond's DPS. The player also has the opportunity for freeing other animals trapped in cage by Gemron and bankrupting the company via smashing up the scenery. This counters for both of these actions and you can be rewarded in the form of different perks or combo moves after levels are finished if you hit certain milestones. The gameplay loop consists of platforming around, smashing things, more platforming, crying because you fell down had to repeat a section, the occasional boss fight sprinkled here and there. These range from copy pasta to some actually impressive set pieces. I want you to take this next bit of a pinch of salt. We're talking about a game from the 2003. The graphics for a 2003 game are okay. When I'm looking back at the time for comparison, I'm thinking of Hit and Run or Sands of Time, Knights of the Old Republic. I was surprised they were all 2003 titles, but if we compare to those, the textures aren't great. The character design does shine through, however, in both the representation of your typical corpo to the fat mall cops and our cartoonish little animal friends. Hell, when the hazmat dudes come out, I remember them scaring the shit out of me as a kid. We have a 2319! <laughs> the actual backgrounds and level designs too can look pretty cool at times. They can also look kind of samey if we're going through corridor after corridor or copy-pasted sections. But when the graphics show direction, it's pretty cool. 
The music's quite basic, but still fit for purpose. The, the main things you'll be hearing are SFX from chucking your rabbit around, beating down on enemies, the voice acting of our main cast and even the mooks is quite good, with them having obviously themed out the enemies. If the game ever got remastered, they should definitely bolster the amount of dialogue that can get spat out by Redmond specifically, but all in all it's quite you know, fit for purpose. We're trained to conduct experiments on fellow animals. Imagine controversy avoided with an easy push of a button. Press a button, get a cookie. Press a button, get a cookie. Press a button, get a cookie. The game's quite a middling platformer when we compare it to others at the time, but what does make it stand out amongst others is its off the wall comedy, its unique setup. In fact, we're animals escaping from some weird test corporation. I'm going to drive through our furry friend's route out of Gemron, commenting on story beats and level design as we go. Uh, so expect spoilers from here. Genron. Admit it, life is boring. Reality doesn't cut it. Doesn't your everyday routine just sap your soul? Don't you wish life had more zest, more verve, more, I don't know, elan? Well, now there's meaning to your awkward existence. The Genron Corporation. Genron is dedicated to bringing you the most exciting products this side of your face. No idea is too grand, no technology too advanced. We're about you, all about you. Look, just look, isn't that fantastic? And what about this? Doesn't that make you smile a big one? But how in the name of science do we do it? Lean in close, the secret is animals. Yes, animals. You often see them wandering the streets, bored and penniless, crapping all over your station wagon. And though they seem hopelessly dumb, we here at Genron overlook their lack of previous job experience and put them to work in our factory, testing the latest in our amazing line of We start the game with the initial escape of Spanx and Redmond from the Recombinator, a device presumably meant to smash two animals together. I'm going to let the intro play out and you can see some of the great 2003 goodness. Can you imagine a weasel rabbit? Don't you love it? Say you love it, Genron. Oh my god, get away from that! We're out. I can't believe it. We're out! Bad guy! Bad guy! Stop! How do you outsmart the fox? When he chases you into tall grass, do you run or lie still? <laughs> Listen closely. I am going to give you the most important piece of advice if you want to escape from this place. <laughs> Can't really use a deep tissue massage. Your energy, while admirable, is misdirected. Oh my god! It's the voice from all the movie trailers! Do you know the secret to defeating the humans? Um... No, not really. Cut loose. In a world where a voice from the heavens tells you to cut loose. <laughs> and evil looms around every corner! Time to move. Follow my voice. Hey. Can you do me a favor and stop breaking everything with my face? Yeah! Thank you! Once we get control of the two again, we're given the task to cut loose by a mysterious computer voice. This game is kind of like a jaunt through one giant rage room. We're going to smash everything we see and help the two achieve this task. Our first area is EO1 Showcase. Presumably a customer facing area of Gemron where they could highlight some of the ways they can make human life easier while making animal life harder. It serves as your basic tutorial for the game. Jump over hazards, smash through robots, collect hypo snacks, and you should dawdle straight through. Some of the funnier bits to note include the hamster cannons. Ow. 
and the monkey toaster room. Here is where man tests the safety of his toys. This is the first of many atrocities you will witness humans commit on his animal friends. We're not given much to go on in terms of plot, though this early in the game that's probably a good thing. Run forward, evade capture, cut loose. Eventually we end up absolutely slamming a giant globe down, avoiding hazmat hunters and entering the food court. Excellent. You have left your calling card. Now make yourself scarce while I attend to other matters. It's a bit of a hub area as we get yet another cutscene, introducing us to the head of Gemron, Franklin Mann, and the type of guy he is. Animals, let's be frank, are dumb. Why won't people just come out into the open and admit it? Animals are stupid. They don't use money, they don't have thumbs, they have no people skills, they're lazy. I mean, we all have to work, nobody likes it. Life is hardship. I've never done a thing I wanted to do my entire life. Come up and for the animals, my friends. They've gotten a free ride far too long. And so, quite frankly, have all of you. You're fired. Meeting adjourned, gentlemen. Not just yet. No, 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 no. Yes. No, we have nothing to say to each other. I come with a warning. Peanut butter! Set the animals free, Franklin. Set the animals free before it's too late. You're out of your mind. Do you know what would happen if I freed all the animals? We could make breakfast tacos. Nope, can't do it. Animal research is too important to science. The wheels are already in motion. Do the right thing, or this company will fall. Look here, friend. I know you're an employee, and I know that you're in the building, and I know that when I find you, I'm gonna poke you in the eye. Shut down main elevator access to all hubs. Those little crawdads aren't going anywhere. A lot of area objectives are given by text pop-ups. When we enter the food court, we're told to head to an exit elevator. Figure the company like a giant cylinder, and we're trying to get to the top. Once we get to the elevator, however, we find out it's been powered down. This is the first of many obstacles you will face. The elevator before you leads to freedom, but the power has been cut off in order to prevent your escape. Your goal, restore the power. What's all this then? Escaped animals. Well, congratulations. Honestly, you look like a pair of fine jets, you do. Good teeth. I bet you might even escape. Right then. Elevator. See it there? Get you out of this hub. The problem is him. Uh, fatsy fat fat friend there controls the elevator. Lucky for you, he's got self-esteem issues and an affinity for chocolate. 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 Now, look over there. That's the cafeteria. Chocolate lives there. A ton of it. Get the idea? But you need to get to that ledge over there before anything else. Now, I'll wager that if you swing that chain over your head, real fast-like, you'll glide right across like a dandelion. Got it? Right then. My master's calling me. Um... <laughs> With a new goal of restoring power, we meet Lincoln, as Stewie Griffin sound alike, and he educates us on our way out. 
We need to get chocolate from the cafeteria and bait a guard down the elevator with it. Like, it's as good of an objective as any we're going to get in a platformer game from 2003. Uh, this leads to a bit of platforming where we encounter power flies. Now, these essentially act like little markers we have to hit as we run through the different bits of areas. Once we follow the power flies to where we need to get them, uh, they'll power something on. Once we get to the cafeteria, we see yet another barrier. Oh my! Looks like hash and pepper's back on the menu, boys. She's talking about, like, hash browns, right? Mother! As you can see, the game does a lot of slapstick, and it doesn't take itself too seriously. And the beginning parts of the game are excellent, right? The plot isn't the most immersing, but when the comedy's working well, you can tend to forgive that. Like, this isn't something complex or heavy like Crusader Kings or Heavy Rain. Like, we're smacking lunch ladies with a rabbit. The boss fights tend to be quite hit spongy, and so I'm not going to show you the full thing. Just know we have to beat her to unleash the chocolate. Consider yourself a breakfast, sir. With our chocolate rabbit, we can get ourselves spotted on CCTV, and from there it's a straight path to EO3 Endurance. Now the next few levels will serve to try and restore power to the elevator so that we can advance upward through the building. Remember, giant cylinder, trying to get to the top. Endurance and robotics move us horizontally, not vertically. Endurance. I always thought of it as a weird zone. The objective here is to basically blast through from point A to point B so that we can open up a bridge to robotics. This includes blasting through reception and seeing a new enemy type in the form of the ninja secretaries. We also blast through various halls full of lasers until we encounter some animal testing we need to put a stop to. We even let loose a whole set of monkeys and a gorilla. The hazmat hunters from before make a return and after getting through a whole load of lasers. Disabling the anti-grav testing in the zone. We managed to do a full loop of endurance getting us back to robotics. It's hard to talk about the story in this game when not a whole lot happens. There's some plot beats here and there and it does channel through, but the zones are so large and tend to be paced so slowly that the beats are few and far between. But anyway, we, we move on to robotics. Robotics involves us chasing Roman Polanski around the zone, fighting off bots and jumping on them to access new areas. Now I had no clue who Roman Polanski was. Again, when I think I was like seven or eight when I was playing the game, um, I still had no clue. I had to look him up. He's a film director who looks an awful lot like the techie we chase through. The whole zone can be boiled down to laser hallway, robo weasel fight, laser hallway, robo weasel fight, etc. Uh, laser hallway is just, you know, jump over the lasers, you'll be fine. Robo weasels, just spam square, you'll be fine. Once we eventually get through the gauntlet, we manage to get into the vents where we see a potential ally to the animals. Ready to commence pain experiment 36? Proceed. 
now. Found it. I was sure I fixed it that time. It could be your breath. I've been waiting for you. What are you waiting for? Throw me at her! <laughs> I've got a message for you from our friend. Skedaddle to the power center and get that elevator working on the double. We'll see each other again. Just don't get caught. Of course, her screen time's cut short as we get through the zone. Now, parts of this zone look pretty sweet. Most of it, however, just gets a bit repetitive. The final fight in this zone consists of fighting a load of spider bot. and we see Roman get absolutely mullered. The entrance to power opens up to us. And remember at this stage, we're just concerned with getting power to that hub elevator. We want to get to the top of the building. Now after jumping down the hole in robotics, power opens up slightly differently to the other zones. We've got a central area with five diverging paths and we need to go through each path in turn to unlock the next. Between each section involves a lot of crawling through these hot pipes. I'll give you a snippet here and just know this gets super repetitive. You imagine doing this, probably three whole pipes across each of those five areas going in and out of the zone. It's a bit ass. You know how to read English? Yeah, me neither. Our first area is the eel tanks. We're going to smash the valves and let the eels out. After that, the piston drops and we can head back to the hub zone. And this is how we'll advance through most of power. The next section includes our helium pumps. Throughout the game, Redmond can be put into different infusers, as I think I mentioned in the intro. In this case, when we use helium, we can fly up to reach out of reach areas. There's then a gliding puzzle. And the most goddamn frustrating part of the game. I think this is where I stopped playing as a kid. Honestly, trying to land a scurry on some of these pipes while fighting the camera is horrid. It's where the cracks start to show in the game, right? Because we're not getting much story at this point, and the platforming's taking a turn. Endurance and Robotics were probably like 7 to 8 out of 10 zones. This one, straight 4, dire. And it. The middle part of the game, or should I say the early middle, is ass. Like, we'll get into it. Once we get out of here, we encounter the boss of the area, and it's a giant spider. Hello, and welcome to the general power box. You are about to die.
Now we need to get the spider to shoot the different Tesla coils around here. That will charge up a turret, and then we have to blast the thing with it. The only problem is its stupid amount of health and lack of healing supplies for us. But it's it's much cooler than the heat vents. I'm not going to complain. Congratulations. You have defeated the Genron Power Boss. Lawyers will be here momentarily to begin litigation. Enjoy. Once we blast it down, we unlock the electric infusers, and we can use these to swing on orbs that lack power. So we can use just generic blue orbs to smash Redmond in and swing up to higher areas, things we couldn't reach with a normal jump. Uh, this electric obviously lets us activate ones that weren't powered up. With the power section done, uh, we have to head back to the main hub through ventilation, as remember we dropped into this zone through a giant hole in a different zone. We can't go back that way. Ventilation, again, weird zone. It and power paint the company building as having this massive underbelly that makes this whole setup seem suspiciously eldritch. Like, ironically, Whiplash is a better adaptation of the White Wolf Gaming's Werewolf the Apocalypse than Werewolf Earthblood was. Uh, the vents are also where I started to get lost. Uh, what you're meant to do is uncover the helium infuser here and float to the top of the zone. Now, to do that, you've got to do a bit of exploring. The first section is this giant donut of a room, so eventually you'll get what you need to, you know, monkey in a typewriter style. But this game does not make that easy. After a bit of confusing where the hell do I go platforming, we managed to get the infuser open and float to the top of ventilation. Deeper in the vents comes the most annoying gliding section in the game. Like, God forbid you mistime your glide and don't press square at the right time to hit one of those orbs. Just have fun. Uh, we also don't get a crumb of story. We head on out and get spat out in the main hub of the food court area. So, you know, back to where we need to be towards the elevator. Once we hit the elevator, we actually get one of the funniest cutscenes in the game. In fact, this whole section's full of them. Then start a carrot farm and find a lady rabbit. There'll be lots of little baby Redmonds. I'll have to buy an SUV. I'll forgive all debts. I'll forget all trespasses. You know what? I'll even forgive you for eating my mother. No, 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 really. It's no big deal. I'm over it now. Life is good. This made me forgive how dire power and vents were. This game thrives on comedy. The elevator took us up to security of all places and we have to beat up a load of pool blarts before we get hit with another bit of plot. Combat can get a bit repetitive, but once you unlock the finisher, you're just gonna be triple tapping square and then hitting circle as your main combo. And you will do this for every bit of combat, I promise you, it won't change. Now we're up to the elevator, what's next? Hello boys, time to meet the man behind the voice. Oh my god, it's Willie Nelson. I am Enos. Now you will know everything there is to know as it relates to you. Hey, hey, he wrote that Patsy Cline song, Crazy. Wait a minute. You're a fat liar! You said that if we took that stupid elevator all the way up to the top, there'd be an exit! I never promised you a rose garden. I promised you freedom. 
I hate him. I hate you! Calm yourself and listen to my story. Ooh, I'm listening. I was the first animal here. My suffering was the foundation of this company. From my body, they squeezed every last drop of knowledge possible, destroying it in the process. But they left the most important part. Not from what I can see. With Carol Ann's help, my mind was plugged into their system. Though my control is limited, I can show you a means of escape. Here at the bottom of their warren are machines that make fire. Arouse these machines, and there will be smoke. With smoke, there is danger. And with danger, these doors open by themselves. Do you understand? Yeah, I get it. Sometimes the shortest distance between two points is doing a bunch of crap for you. Not for me, but for all the animals trapped here. Want us to drop off your videos while we're at it? The humans have found me. You must all leave. I'm staying with you. No, my darling. Your involvement with me must be kept secret. Please, my little sugar pumpkin. Yeah. Oh boy! Wait, both of you. I have something to tell you. Something quick? This is the part where I say something inspirational that you will use later. Goodbye, my friends. Uh, okay. The elevator's not here. That tart took our elevator! Hey! Your girlfriend took our ride! Wait! Come back! I forgot to tell you something. Uh-huh. We're listening. Come here. We'd rather not. I think you'd better. The waste area is... very dangerous. That is all. Ugh! We have to enter the waste section of the building. This is the basement, full of fire. We're gonna have to light the building on fire to, you know, get rid of all the security above. Uh, to get there, we need to fill up a giant skip, or for our US speakers, a big dumpster. We need to get waste from two adjacent zones, shipping and genetics, and I'll make it known now, I hate shipping. It's the worst area in the game. It's ass, I hate it, dog water. Uh, it's the next area, we're gonna go into it now. Shipping, shipping, shipping. This is probably my least favourite area in the game, and full disclosure, salt will flow. Now the whole objective here is to work your way to your manufacturing lines, get a load of waste to fill the dumpster, and then you pour it into the one by security, right? Doesn't seem like a problem. Now the problem? If you didn't take the map boon, uh, full map vision at all times, right? You'll be limited to seeing the full map at one of the map stations, Now there's one of these in each zone. You're going to be more lost than anyone over the age of 25 when you bring up Skibbity Toilet. Like, this zone has it all. Ranged enemies? Okay. Annoying platforming. Confusing level design. And to top it off, the waiting. The damn waiting. God forbid you get lost here and double back on accident. You know, as you do, these laser hallways will suck the soul out of you. Nothing even happens of story relevance. Troll through the big zone, fill up the big bin, enjoy the best part of the level, leaving it, and go to genetics. Oh. 
Genetics is a slightly more exciting area. Again, nothing of story significance really happens. We're in here to pump trash out, or in this case, literal fertilizer. Welcome to the plant zone. Some of the environmental storytelling is quite cool. By manipulating genetic strings, we can develop juicier fruit and sweeter. What is that that I'm doing? We as we harvest the precious sap of life, the source of everlasting nutrition and all powerful matter. The knowledge we glean here is priceless. We are on the verge of divinity. We can't stop now. Genron. You get back to it being a corrupt, weird megacorp instead of just running through FedEx HQ. Uh, this zone consists of you running through multiple plant labs, with one room being absolute ass, the tree of life. You have to jump around raising platforms by hitting buttons. So you literally hop up, smash the button, hop down, hop up a different platform. Uh, by God, don't drop once or you'll have to restart the whole thing. You have to be doing this with the efficiency of a Navy SEAL, right? Do a weird copy paste section of activating the fertilizer carts and then race the dookie back to security. It's a much quicker zone than shipping and, you know, 6 out of 10. any love for me right now. Waste is such a cool zone thematically, though I still had an ass taste in my mouth from shipping. I mean, look at this. The results of all the biohazards waste, like we're going full sci-fi wackiness here. Waste as a zone involves us going through conveyors and pipes, dodging that toxic waste, all in aid of getting to the incinerator. Remember, cut loose and burn down the whole place. One of the coolest bits is the mountain of trash. Now, this area isn't massively complex. Hell, it feels like a bit of a rehash of power, but it's so cool looking. Jump through the sewers. Jump through Colt Mechanicus HQ. <laughs> and we finally get a boss fight that's comparable to the lunch lady. You ever seen Conker's Bad Fur Day? Well, I think the devs did here. We need to use the fire infusers and hit the thing in the face, and once the whole arena is down... Thank you. 
Are you aware that this entire area is going to be covered in flames in just a few moments? fight over and it's not a hard one luckily lincoln rescues us and we find our way back to ventilation and back to the main hub area when we get back to the main hub the toxic infusers are fixed we can use them to get to the medical wing uh, it's a bit of a jump from trying to burn the place down i know but it's our next stop and it manages to be super cool despite on paper seeming really ass I don't feel anything. Okay, now I'm feeling something. It's chock full of human enemies. Uh, the platforming disappears for a bit, and I know what you're thinking. Isn't the combat repetitive? Well, yeah, if you don't have the infusers. This stuff's dope as hell. Smack through guards, jump through some vents, defrost some animals, find our red-haired ally from earlier. I'm taking this company down. Wanna help? Are you ready for what I'm going to give you? I am so ready. Ouch! Just relax. The anesthetic will kick in any moment. Are you sure? I don't feel anything. Okay, now I'm feeling something. Just breathe deep and let your mind drift. I'm feeling mild drowsiness, abdominal discomfort, dryness of mouth, nausea, headaches, constipation. You want to try some of this! This data cube is important, so don't lose it. You need to plug it in to the company's mainframe. The mainframe is all the way up in the executive tower. The high voltage upgrade I'm installing inside you will allow access into places you weren't able to go before, like the executive tower. High voltage upgrade. Data cube. Executive Tower, Purple Daisies. Oh boy! We receive a data cube used to crash the company's servers and an upgrade that lets us use yellow orbs to swing about instead of the typical blue ones we're used to. These are ones we've not been able to access before. You're thinking it's time, right? We go stick it to the man, smash his servers, finally get out. No. Uh, uh, you need to backtrack to each of the zones, besides the vents, and get a security card before we can make it to the next zone. Honestly, this is where the game felt padded for me, and like my soul left my body. I get we need a runtime, but my god, like put some fast travel in the game. The worst part's when I went back to robotics, and like, I fell down the hole to power and had to traipse my way all the way back to the hub from there, just to do robotics again. So there are seven security cards, and these make up the last half of the game. In each zone, there are some yellow orbs we need to swing from, but watch out in endurance. There's two sets of yellow orbs, and one leads you back to the prologue area. The game doesn't have any fast travel. Fun, fun, fun. Um, sorry about that. Now, endurance has us going into cryogenics testing. We need to make a single guard follow us into each pod so that we can beat down on Iceman shooting down from above us. You'll find that the bosses with these cards are super hit spongy, and genuinely not a lot happens of plot significance, so I'm going to blast through this, but you can imagine this is the last half of the game here. Robotics, we find a cyborg Polanski, chase him around some fun areas, and then beat him down. He's probably the most fun of the bunch.
get it, Sphinx. It's chat time. We head back down the hole in the entrance to go to power. Power, we need to work our way back to the final boss of the area. You know, a quick 15 minute backtrack through copy paste tubes. And that annoying rail section that I said made me want to top myself. Fun. Once we're here, we hit a switch and then it just starts another boss fight. We have to beat up a load of guards. Shipping, we need to take a third route through the shipping hub and we get to a redeemable area of shipping I wish I got in the first pass. We do some fun platforming, float through some helium puzzles before we get to knock the what's it dust off the head of the warehouse. Lights out. Come on, you would have said it too. Genetics, we revisit the recombinators from the prologue, disrupt their function, and then smash up one of the mad scientists. And at this point, I was begging for the pain to end. Please game, either finish yourself or finish me. I'm begging you. Medical, we take an alternate route, which I'm unsure if we could have took earlier to save time. And we have to fight a surgeon by using those annoying door grinder things. And you're stuck in an animation loop until you bust the machinery or you get hit. Uh, just in case you didn't see in the cutscenes, these grinders we'd used to open up doors previously and you just shove the rabbit in and go through a bit of an animation loop. This fight's just RNG. When it's over, we've got one last zone, and throughout all this, we've not heard from any of our NPC friends. Waste, we go for a jolly, enjoying some fun zip lines uh, before we have to beat the tankiest janitor in the world. I'm not trying to be negative, trust me. Once we have all the key cards, it's back up to the elevator, and we finally get to a new zone, Executive, the top of the tower. Right, Executive is quite fun. We fight our way through ninja secretaries, climb up the tallest spire of our final tower, we even pass a rocket ship for some reason. The place is fun, the whole chapter's fun. Why did I just have a three hour backtrack to get here? We go through some fun helium glides, the whole rocket area is cool as heck, until we eventually make it to the server room. What do you know? The upload terminal. Now you know how this works, right? As soon as you stuff that data cube in there, some huge monster is gonna pop out of nowhere and try and waste us. So don't get too excited. The cockroach's favorite food is the glue on the back of stamps. Isn't that absurd? You boys are causing a load of trouble, and I just can't wrap my mind around why. Do you know what would happen if we just up and freed every animal here? We could make breakfast tacos? Do humans go around biting children? Do humans make our oceans smell like fish? Animals gotta screw loose, no doubt about it. And that's why we gotta build a better animal. We gotta speed up evolution. That's why we made you. Say what? Experiment 132. Genron's very own artificial weasel. <sighs> we were rooting for you, son. Too bad you turned out so darn defective. Experiment 132? I'm practically your pappy. So why don't you just hand over whatever's on that data cube, okay? Because I know it can't be good. Is it porn? Sir, you're speaking to, like, animals. Right you are, Peterson. You're fired. Ready? Aim. Fire! Right there. Follow me! <laughs> At last we have reached our climax. Feel the rising action around you. 
experience the satisfying conclusion about to unfold. I'm out of here. Behold your destruction, Franklin D. Man. <laughs> Is this the best you can do, Enos? A man covered in. <laughs> The pacing of the story so far is just wacky. It's like, you can tell where they've padded areas out because if those sections were gone, we'd have an actual flowing story. It'd be so much nicer. With the company data ruined and man running to his office, we do head to find him. Alone this time, because Redmond just did a runner. Did you know cow farts could fuel this entire country for decades? Hit the deck, son. For this battle, you want to run towards man while dodging his fireballs, quickly hide behind the pillars, jump out towards the boss, get another cutscene. Then we're going to run around the room and try and make him hit these unlit lamps so that, again, we get another cutscene. Once the boss is out, we're going to lure him into attacking these four bookcases, and then once they're destroyed, we get our great return. Never send a weasel to do a... to do... to do the job of a weasel chain to a rabbit. After laying into him with some combos, we get the final cutscene, and the story wraps itself up. So that's your whole plan. Mindless destruction, that's it. No cunning subterfuge, just needless maniacal crazy chaos. Oh well, I was Did on my way to the Terminator anyways. That weasels and rabbits are natural enemies in the wild. I'm fired. Attention. T minus 30 seconds to Project X lift. Quickly! Everyone board the ship. Yes. No! Now is everyone aboard the ship? Nine, eight, seven, Wait six, for me. five, four, Come on! three, two, one. Dude, that bites. Seriously. Maybe we can sue someone. Well, I am one hungry hare. Guess we better scare up some din, din huh? Maybe we can find my mother. And in that moment, Weasel and Rabbit were no longer enemies. Okay, let's do it. And so it was that the mighty corporation fell. 
and the animals took their rightful place among the stars. And you yourself felt satisfaction brought about by an artificial resolution of a conflict. God willing, you will tell your friends to purchase this game. Or let's be honest, just let them borrow it. And in doing so... Oh, will you shut up already? I'm getting a migraine. Overall, the game lives out its name with some absolute whiplash. Sections of the game are so cool, but then five seconds later you're just trawling through copy-pasted padding or being kicked in the balls by silly level design. Like, the game has a problem with padding. Forced waiting sections, hit spongy bosses, the second half of the game involves you backtracking to every level you've just been through, and there's no fast travel, like, you've got to walk it. The story's cool until they leave it so long between beats you just lose all investment, and the beginning of the game's cool, the end of the game's cool, why is the middle so patchy, like, I can see why I dropped it as a kid. I felt my inner child lose interest because, even after playing for the first couple hours, I was looking forward to see where the game was going to go, and what new jokes would pop up, and when the jokes ran out, I just kept constantly getting lost and I stopped having fun. I'd give this game a 5 out of 10, like straight down the middle, half hot, half cold, over and out smooth brains. Easter chocolate.